All right, we're going to take a look at various ways to bring files into Keyshot. Uh, there's a few things to note before you just start bringing files in. Uh, the very first time I used Keyshot, I went about it just by using the file import option. So if you look under file import, uh, we uh, have many different CAD formats. So we can use Solid Edge, SolidWorks, ProE. Uh, I'll be using Solid Edge for this particular demonstration. Uh, and we do have a plugin for that, and I'll show you what the plugin will actually do. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick one and just say File Open, just to show you the next screen. All right, even though I have my file set to the tessellation quality to the finest on the import will do, uh, let me show you an image file here. All right, so on the image on the left was using the plugin uh, for my CAD system, and on the right was using Keyshot to just say File Open. Uh, so you can see that the difference in the how the image is going to finally come out when you do a final render. All right, so let me show you actually how this works. I don't need to bring that in. All right, so from the solid edge side um, and with other CAD systems, there are a plugin. So I look under my add-ins, we have a plugin for Keyshot. All right, and if I look at this website, uh, this is the Keyshot website. So here, if you just do Google search for Keyshot plugins, it'll take you to this website. And we have a, a, a selection of different plugins. Uh, so here's the one I was using for Solid Edge. And uh, something else to note here: uh, the live linking from Keyshot to Solid Edge. Uh, so here are the other programs: SolidWorks, Rhino, and ProE. Uh, so this allows you to live link your geometry to Keyshot. Uh, so let me go ahead and do a demonstration of that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say render straight from my solid edge. You can also do a file save as, uh, which will also create a BIP file. So if you look at the Keyshot BIP, uh, and under my options we have a slider bar here uh, to say, you know, when I export this, I want this to be a finer display, so my rounded edges are more round. Uh, or obviously if I'm just looking for a quick representation, something I can take a quick look at, uh, you can set it to export as a slower display, and uh, your or a faster display, excuse me, and your resolution is going to be uh, not as good. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel this, and I'm just going to go straight directly to Keyshot. So I'm going to hit render and save it. And of course, I already have one created. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just overwrite that one with this new one, and let Keyshot bring me out uh, a new image. So let me go ahead and minimize or I'll actually toggle over to Keyshot. So here it is, importing the geometry into Keyshot. All right, so uh, here we go. Uh, we got the file in here. Uh, let's, for this example, I'm gonna take a little bit of time and go ahead and add some paint to it. I'm not gonna go real crazy with uh, the colors and textures. Uh, let's just add a little bit these guys and let's go ahead and add some metal options here let's go to uh, since we got some copper tubing uh, let's just add some copper scratched to this run of pipe or uh, plumbing I should say tubing there we go uh, that's good enough for now all right so I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to solid edge all right so the first thing I'm going to do <coughs> as you notice that uh, we have an orange color on this and uh, immediately uh, Keyshot when I opened it up found that and actually brought it in and added that color to the part. Uh, the reason why I left that on this uh, no color on that one in the Keyshot is because this actual housing is a part file. It's kind of representation of an assembly. So if I open this up and let's go ahead and make a quick change to the color so I'm going to go into uh, the styles and just modify the orange. Let's make it a little bit darker uh, and also just make a little bit shinier to make it look more like a bronze color. So that is opening up right now. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and make those changes to the orange. And again, let's go ahead and, like I said, let's make that a little bit darker, even on the uh, ambient diffusion here. And let's go ahead under appearance, let's make it a little more shiny and let's more, more reflective too, have a little reflection so it looks more metallic. Go ahead and apply that. And again, this is just a part copy, so like I said, th this bolt is actually 
I just had to apply, I apply the steel color to it, so I don't want I wouldn't have to split that off or split the thermostat housing off. All right, let's go ahead and save and close this back to the assembly. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make a, another change. We're going to go ahead and change uh, a valve location. Uh, so I can, uh, since this is an assembly and I have uh, some synchronous tools, uh, this is an ordered part, so it's nice. It'll actually give me some uh, dimensions that I can modify from the assembly, so I don't have to go into the part to make the change. Let's move this to the other side of the leg. Actually, if I can type a type a good number in here. Oh, sorry. 360 is on itself. All right, there we go. And uh, the last thing, let it go ahead and update itself so it moves the uh, little nozzle. And, of course, it's going to move the copper tubing with it. All right, there we go. So now, as I said, there's live linking. So if I just come over here and say update. All right, so what it's doing, let me go ahead and see if I can switch over to Keyshot. Uh, what it's going to do is actually update and look at the two differences between the files. And as you can see, a little uh, little slider bar here is going through the parts and looking at the variations in the two. It's com comparing the differences. And if it finds, obviously, the change, it'll go ahead and change the geometry. Uh, but what's nice about it is that I don't have to go back. So if I had a very large assembly doing this with, and I had a whole bunch of colors and textures and parts, and, you know, there's a drastic change. Something was added and or, or moved or deleted. You know, instead of me having to go back into Keyshot and recreate this the whole time, I can just hit update, and uh, all those colors and textures, all the labels that I took time to place on the geometry are going to stay with the geometry themselves. All right, so that's a big time saver in the end. So just a few minutes of uh, actually updating, not even a minute or so. And of course, I had, there's a, quite a few parts in here. should be the last of it. Okay, there we go. So the orange, a little darker color, not as dark as it is in Solid Edge. Uh, I would actually come over here to this guy, and uh, since it's not as dark as I like, uh, it will read the color from Solid Edge. So as you can see, it reads design body, orange, etc. All right, I can come over here and say, you know what, that's plastic. I want to make it look metallic. So it has more of a reflective, and there we go. And uh, let's go ahead and change the color. Again, I wanted it to be a little bit darker of a bronze color. So let's go ahead and uh, use my little slider bar here. And there we go. Add a little roughness to this because it is metal, and I don't want it to be uh, too shiny as a polish. And so that looks pretty good right there. So, you know, if, if that's something I want to use again and again, uh, I'll just take that color from Solid Edge and just call this SE Orange and save to library and just put it wherever you want, under paints, under your own color texture, so you can make your own new folder if you want to in there. Uh, let's just add that under paint. There we go. So next I want to use that color. There's my Solid Edge SE Orange. All right. So that uh, concludes the live linkage between Solid Edge and Keyshot. And again, that works with other CAD systems out there. Uh, thank you very much.